Good evening, grave robbers. Welcome back to the television graveyard. We are your TV necromancers, Laura Prince and Noah Woolenham. We have come here tonight to examine the spirits of season four of Stay Doomed. Mm -hmm. With me, as always, is TV's Noah Woolenham. Hi, I'm TV's Noah Woolenham. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a quote. Yeah. So it's um, it's our season four post mortem, y'all. Yeah. Welcome to the post mortem. This is where we're gonna look back at season four, the ups, the downs, the quips, and the danger of season four. And we're gonna start by pouring one hout. What do you got there, Lara? A nice cup of tea. Yeah, we're just being homely. <laughs> Home? I don't think you mean homely. No, I don't. I just mean... Because homely means ugly, right? It means plain. Plain? Because there was a whole Ask Reddit I saw recently of like, am I the... Or I was an, I'm the asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my husband to stop calling me homely? Ew! Because he just thought it meant like... Cozy. Home and cozy, yeah. Yeah, no, you say we're, we are being cozy. It's a, uh, a rainy night. It's, um, we're hoping that the outside interference does not get too loud. Yes, because... The, the Phillies just made the World Series. The Phillies just made the World Series and people are shooting off fireworks. Yes, so uh, we're hoping that doesn't interfere too much. Now, I have. I've, I've taken some seltzer and I put in some grenadine to make it red. I then added some coconut rum. Because it's Red October! No. Oh. <laughs> and some Twizzlers. And this is... Because it's Red October! No. This is the Medusa. A cocktail recommended by Smug Alice on our Inhumans episode. Ah! So I made this as it was a recommended cocktail. And it's pretty good. And it's Red October. And it's Red October. Yeah. So we I'm not even usually a big sports person, but I do get excited when Philadelphia sports do well. I like when people around me are happy. <laughs> yeah, I, it's fun. Yeah. There's this very festive feel to it, and I just, I really like it. I like it too. Yeah. So now we are going to go through the episodes that we went through this season of Stay Doomed. And we're, we use season kind of weird. It's it's the time between hiatuses. And the hiatus were is earlier this year. It was actually supposed to be even earlier. We were going to take off in mid-October. Yes. Uh, but a certain Freaks and Geeks threw a huge monkey wrench into this. So we're uh, going to take November off. What's strange is actually season the hiatus between seasons two and three was unusually late. Yeah, between two and three, it was in January or was it December? December. December. And usually our hiatuses are in August. Yeah. To line up, or August, September. And then this one got pushed to December, the uh, hiatus between three and four. And then we decided to do a November hiatus this year. Yes. So this is a shorter season for us. So there are only... 29 episodes of Stay Doomed right. this season. Uh, and the thing about the way we label our episodes is we I know we did a five-parter for Freaks and Geeks, but we consider that one episode. Yes. So we've put out way more hours of content than 29. But in terms of episodes of Stay Doomed, it is considered 29. We're going right. to go through everything, plus all the bonus stuff that we put out and all that good stuff. And we started strong this season, in my opinion, with Terra Nova. Terra Nova was unexpectedly a lot of fun. It's very interesting that we kind of bookend our seasons with Terra Nova and Freaks and Geeks. Yeah. Because Terra Nova was an hour drama, and it ran 12 episodes. And we did that in two parts. So yes. it made sense for Freaks and Geeks to then be three parts based off of past data. But I don't know what the deal was with Freaks and Geeks. Let's talk about 
Terra Nova uh, first. Because, because yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, with Terra Nova, we loved watching it. Like, th- it was very often that we were like, all right, we got to watch an episode of Terra Nova. And we'd finish it and we'd look at each other and go, another? I, I think it's also the time of the year. Uh, we were on hiatus when we watched Terra Nova. Yeah. Uh, because we actually, we do work during the hiatus. It's just on a slightly more chill schedule. Yeah. Uh, because we can take a little bit more than a week to do an episode. Mm-hmm. And it allows us, uh, this is actually usually, we used to take our hiatus in August because it was your peak time mm-hmm. in your uh, grown-up job. Yeah. Uh, November's my peak time in yeah. my grown-up job, so I think that's why we were... Shooting for November this time around. December, I think we had this fantasy about the holidays. But it was this very slow time of year. Uh, I know there was a couple of days that I was in bed because I'd had like a doctor's appointment. Yeah. And so I was like in bed for like two days. Mm -hmm. And we watched like four Terra Novas during that time. Yeah. Uh, because I was well enough to watch TV and write. I just couldn't really move around super good. So I think there was part of it that was just, it was a slower time of year rhythmically of like that week. Yeah. Be- it was that liminal week between the holidays. Uh, one other thing I want to point out about our episodes here is each Freaks and Geeks was about an hour. Mm-hmm. The two episodes of Terra Nova, the first one is an hour 43. The second one is two and a half hours. So we were more comfortable doing like super long form content then. And we kind of have tried to keep things around an hour more recently. I don't know if we we should go back to the like the super long episodes. Like we're hardcore history or something. You know what I think part of it also is? If you're looking at November, December, January 2022, what do you get? Omicron. We were home more. Yeah. We were very homebound. Uh, We were... Because that's something when we get to the end of the episode I was going to bring up is the differences between seasons and how season four is very much marked by us trying to also re-enter the world. Yeah. (laughs) Terra Nova has also had a very perfect split. It did. I remember it was like, this is a different show. Because the first episode of Terra Nova really feels like this cute, fun... Slice of life slice with of dinosaurs. Life, yeah, slice of life sci-fi show you could watch with your family. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the second half of Terra Nova feels like a much more violent, intense adult drama. In a way that I really do feel like they they shifted mid-season. I believe we discussed that they shifted mid-season. Yeah. And that change is really reflected in the episodes that we did. Freaks and Geeks, I think we also actually did manage to follow shifts in how the episodes were run. Right. Which I think is interesting. We were plotting like when things came out versus production and things like that the whole time. And I found myself really enjoying the first half of Terra Nova a lot. Yes. Uh, I The second half was fine. But ultimately I did kind of miss that fun... Yeah. In- More Land of the Losty kind yeah, of. Yeah, like... What is it like for adults and children acclimating here? So, I liked Terra Nova, especially at the beginning. I think it's one of those shows that was just ultimately so damned by its budget. Right. Uh, Comments from fans include, Nancy says, uh, Is it possible for the characters to supposedly be the smartest people in the room and also dumber than a bag of hammers? Which is very true. Everyone in Terra Nova is supposed to be a super bright scientist who, ah, screw it, will sneak out behind the walls and go poke a dinosaur in the eye. Yeah. Uh, Also, Grim Blaze says, you're doing something right. This keeps getting shoved into front of me due to the algorithm. Woo! Thanks. Which, that does seem to be true. There is an uptick in hits on the Terra Nova episodes. Not by, like, a lot, 
just looking at the YouTube algorithm here, but there there is an uptick for for Terra Nova. Yeah, and they do fairly well on the Podbean as well. Yeah. Uh, so I do have the Podbean up to kind of take a gander at it. Okay, cool. That, that'll help balance things out. Uh, next was 1775. Uh, I, I like a good, like, weird sitcom. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of, you know, like, big, goofy dad, hot, skinny mom, teenager, suburban sitcom. So when you put a twist on it, I do find myself to be very interested in that. And this was bad. This was really bad. It was not a good show <laughs> at all. But I was super excited by the idea of it. Yeah, it was definitely a good come down from Terra Nova to do something like this. Because Terra Nova is so far in the future slash the past. Yes. <laughs> so it was cool to do something like this. That was simultaneously more grounded in reality and also less grounded in reality. Yeah. It was tropey. It was very tropey. There's just nothing special about it. Uh, other than the fact that I asked a very important question during this. Yeah. This is the episode where I go, why are you guys listening to this? Okay. Because I was just kind of like, we're doing something so obscure. Like, why would people mm-hmm. like, how, how did people end here? He- up here? And uh, the responses I got was Nancy said, stay doomed is my Tuesday thing. Hope it's your Wednesday thing now, Nancy. I hope it's your Wednesday thing now. Uh, Also, Moss Connection says, stay doomed is my Tuesday thing. And I need something in the background while I knit. I hope it's your Wednesday thing now. I hope it's your Wednesday thing and hope the knitting is going well. Uh, Nancy said, also, a good question. I can't think of any time period comedies that worked. Yeah. The only one that I can think of, and I wasn't a huge fan of it, was Another Period. I mean, it depends on how fast and loose we want to play with the definition. Right. Because you could make a solid argument that that 70s show. Right. I don't think... Because the the 70s. It but... is a period piece because it took... Mm. It was filmed in the 90s, took place in the 70s. I'm intrigued to see what happens with that 90s show. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how that goes. We should probably do that 80s show when it comes out. We're gonna, but we have to wait for that 90s show to get a release date. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) We do try to time episodes from time to time to coincide with something in pop culture. Yeah. To get that algorithm on our side. That algorithm. Um, I do want to say, I think this might be, since we're talking about period comedies, to talk about the lost episode of Stay Doom this season. There is a lost episode, yeah. Yeah, the time traveling bong. The uh, only the only show we've ever abandoned. Yeah, I really didn't enjoy it. Like at it, all. It was just so bad and like unnecessarily cruel to its characters that I was like, I don't I and it it was only a half an hour and it felt so long. And there's only 3 episodes of it and we were just like, I don't want to do this. No, it it didn't work. Yeah, it just didn't work as an episode. There's a few things that, like, we've realized what makes a good episode of Stay Doomed and what makes a bad episode of Stay Doomed, and that was going to be a bad episode. Yeah, there wasn't enough... Sometimes, like, we've watched a lot of things that are not very good, but there are times we've looked at each other and gone, this is awful. Yeah. This is going to be a good episode. Right, right. I have a lot to say. I, I didn't have a lot to say about Time Traveling Bong other than, oh, this is bad. It it was very low-hanging fruit humor. It was very much, okay, we're going to go to the Salem Witch Trials and do the easiest set of jokes yeah. in that time period you can think of. Mm-hmm. Like, just gentle listeners, think of a cheap, easy joke. There you go. It was probably that. Yeah, it was probably Just there. saved you half an hour. Yeah. So then we moved on to a show I was very excited for and probably the least favorite thing I watched this season. Really? Turn Up Charlie. Turn Up Charlie was your least favorite thing this season? I think so, yeah. I... I'm trying to see if there's something down the line that I forgot, but... Man, did I hate watching this. I'm flipping through my notes. Because as we're getting into these, I'm pulling up my notes. 
And episode six, my first note is, we're still watching this, huh? I mean... That's never a good sign. I mean, Turn Up Charlie was so bad and so boring in the opening parts of it. And then at the end, stopped making sense. Like, the character of Charlie made no sense because all of a sudden he became successful and then lazy. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, he, like, the plot of, of Turn Up Charlie was he, had, he was a one-hit wonder, and he was trying to get his new music over. And then the one hit got big again, and he just stopped making new music, which goes against everything that happened earlier. <laughs> and there was a lot of weird, convenient things. Like, uh, David and... His wife, David and Sarah, not legally being married. Right. Felt so convenient. Mm-hmm. Because it, it felt like they were trying to figure out how to deal with uh, the fact that they were clearly planning to put Charlie and Sarah together. But they're trying to figure out how they can have their protagonist break up a marriage and come out smelling like a rose. Yeah. And that's a very, very difficult mm-hmm. line to walk of... Uh, One of my least favorite tropes of all time is disposable significant other. Yeah. I find it to be very lazy. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I I had it in a novel I was writing, and uh, he did not survive the last draft. I just pulled out that character entirely because I felt like that was cheap. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's it's a trope I really don't love, and they clearly Mm. were planning to get rid of David, have Charlie... End up with Sarah and be like Gab's, you know, stepdad. And the next season was clearly going to be like them navigating that. Mm-hmm. And it just made everyone so... Everyone was just so monstrously unlikable. Yeah. It, it was just... I didn't know what I was supposed to cheer for in that show. Yeah, like... It, it was kind of just icky. In that way of, it was hinging on infidelity. You were supposed to like them, but everyone was so unlikable. I think another interesting thing about Turn Up Charlie is, I think it's a decent episode of our show. Yes. But what I find interesting is the runtime is an hour and a half for that one. And we had planned it to be a two-parter. Yeah, we did. Because it was was an eight-hour and we were just like, we got halfway through it, and I was like, we're not going to have enough to say for this to be two episodes. Let's just white-knuckle through this. Yeah, we just burned through it instead. Update. My mother just texted me. Hashtag Red October. Red October! Who taught my mother what a hashtag is? <laughs> I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Uh, some comments on uh, Turn Up Charlie include, uh, Danish Guy Reviews says... A classic example of the one camel docudrama? One camera? One camel. Oh. Dramedy. Dramedy. Yeah, that's a very common... It was spelled in an interesting way. I don't know why he said one camel. I responded to it, ha ha. So there's probably something in there I don't remember about a camel. (laughs) But uh, I just wanted to bring up that comment. And also Nancy says, I gave up on this... Halfway, Idris Elba managed to misuse Idris Elba. (laughs) Yeah. Because it was his show. Like, he produced it, like, and he just made a bad show. He made a bad show, Petey. You made a bad show, Petey. That's... If you haven't seen Fantastic Mr. Fox, this is a perfect time for you to watch it. (laughs) Yes. I consider it a Thanksgiving movie. So, if you haven't seen it, take some time during the hiatus. Watch yourself something nice. Yeah. Episode 139 was Inhumans. Inhumans. One of my first notes. That sounds a lot like Terra Nova. (laughs) Man, like... Inhumans was bad. Yeah. I really enjoyed Inhumans. (laughs) I really loved watching Inhumans. Inhumans... uh, One of the things I think was the most flawed about Inhumans was I felt like they burned through Maximus. So I was at the end of eight episodes. Maximus is like left for dead. He's buried alive on a a on the a, moon on the moon, <laughs> almost left of the moon. But I I felt like Maximus was a good 
villain. And it's very much Marvel at that time. Yeah, to like, get rid of a great villain. Yeah, Marvel loves burning through good villains and then being like, oh, Poopy, we could have used that character later. Yeah, I, I would like to say we could always bring Maximus back, but Maximus as his core is just a guy. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have any powers. That's his whole thing. Yeah. So, like, I, if for some reason, I don't know, the Silver Surfer went to the moon and found him, it would be a useless human <laughs> Now, if you'd asked me this six months ago, I would have been like, why would they bring back a character from Inhumans for one dumb cameo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Doctor Strange called. Doctor Strange called and had some thoughts. That was a fun moment for us. I don't know. Do we want to spoil that? I mean, it's been... It's been about six months. Yeah. So Uh, if you want to... Spoilers for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. You can skip ahead a few if you want. Uh, But Black Bolt's in it. (laughs) Black Bolt shows up as part of the Illuminati. Yeah. And... I had gotten warned in a very specific way of someone, like someone asked me if I'd seen it and I went, not yet. And they went, oh, you're going to want to watch it. There's some real Laura shit in there. <laughs> and I love when stuff like that happens because it becomes really fun for me to figure out what quote real Laura shit is. Yeah. Uh, because the last time that happened was um, She-Hulk. And She-Hulk gets very meta, which if you've you've read the comics, is very uh, in line with the comics. I'm not going to spoil the exact way it gets meta. But I was warned in a very similar way. Mm -hmm. And it tracks. Yeah. I I love She-Hulk, just so you guys know. It does get, in fact, very meta. Yeah. Uh, It's... I, I didn't dislike Inhumans. It was... Everyone was so stupid. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I think within humans, there's a lot of stuff. I was like, oh, that's bad, but I'm thoroughly entertained by how stupid that is. Yeah. Uh, and, like, it's... I am, like, looking back on something I haven't watched since February. So, like, I might just have rose-tinted glasses, but... Like, they make a lot of bad mistakes. They shave Medusa's head immediately to save money. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's such a cheap cop-out to nuke her power immediately. Yeah. Brad has entered our neighborhood and will arrive shortly. Okay. Um, So we might end up taking a break a little earlier than we thought. That's fine. Uh, Let's, I'll just read these. Uh, We got some comments on this. Uh, Apparently, according to the Danish Guy Reviews, uh, there is a What If comic about the Inhumans called What If Black Bolt Got the Hiccups. Oh, and Sm- oh no. Uh, Smug Alice says that there's also one called What If Black Bolt Talked in His Sleep. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, Smug Alice also says uh, that, well, first off, has given the idea for the, my cocktail. And also says, because we talk about how this is the only Marvel thing with a sex scene in it. Yes. She says that there's one in Iron Man. An implied sex scene. There is an implied sex scene. Yeah, there's like a girl leaves like the chambers of Tony Stark, right? Yeah, because there's that great scene with Pepper Potts where the girl treats Pepper like the help. Yeah. And Pepper kind of throws it back in her face. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a very good establishing moment for Pepper Potts of like she will not be mistreated. Right. By women Tony has slept with. Uh, I don't love that she calls the girl trash. Yeah. Uh, because it's very late 2000s slut shamey. Mm-hmm. But I did love that Pepper Potts stands up for herself. Yeah, she takes no crap. And that brings us to episode 40, which... Or, I'm sorry, not episode 40, 140, which is Razzy Month. Yeah, we're getting right into Razzy Month. Yeah, Razzy Month is always, like, a bit odd... In that, like, it's such a departure of what we do, but... But at the same time... God, do I love it? doing it. And, and I would have to say that episode 40, or 140, damn it, Diana the Musical is my favorite episode of this season. I can see where that would be. We did a lot of really fun, silly things in this episode that I really enjoyed. Yes. The, uh, this reminded me of... Like, one of my other just weird favorite episodes, which is 
Little Mermaid Island. Because you did a lot of songs Where for we did it. a bunch of bits for it. This one where we constantly play the sound-alike song next to Diana the Musical is so fun. The sound-alike song and also uh, I remember going through and discussing a better version of what each song was trying to accomplish in musical yeah. theater. So it was, a, it was fun because I, I do really enjoy the episodes where we get to play to our specific strengths. Yes. The, this episode is great. Uh, I think it's the longest episode of Razzie Month. If Yeah, it is the longest episode of Razzie Month uh, by a full 12 minutes. Uh, so this is the one I'd recommend you go back to uh, if you went back to any one of them. Because, man, I love this episode. This episode's a lot of fun. Yes. We're also copyright claimed on this one. <laughs> I'm not surprised because when we play soundalikes, especially there's a lot of songs that... Uh, a lot of musical theater is faintly litigious, so. Uh, for this one, Nancy says, I want to give this a stay doomed with the game over rule. I think this would be good if you reworked it with puppets. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's got to be its own rule. Because I feel like there's a lot of things that I would like better with puppets. And we also had a bunch of people uh, agree with us that Diana the Musical does a terrible job of telling us the story of Princess Diana. Mm-hmm. It kind of, like, takes for granted that you already know who Princess Diana is. And we've established, uh, we established really far back in the Stay Doomed canon that you do not know much about Princess Diana. No, I Because I've, uh, I've been re-listening to some of the, like, older, older episodes. Oh, really? Uh, because I, I'm working on something, and we'll talk about it at the end of the episode. Right. And... Uh, we establish as early as I Want to Marry Harry how little you know about Princess Diana. Yeah, which is episode, what, three? Yes. Yeah. Because there's a point where something is said, and I realize you don't realize Princess Diana is Harry's mother. Yeah. <laughs> so that um, that being said, one of my favorite moments in any uh, Stay Doomed film, in any Rising Month ever, is the James Hewitt number at the top of Act 2. I still think about that sometimes. Yeah. D- James Hewitt did do it. The entire song building up to the rhyme of Hewitt and do it. Yeah. Which is not that good. No, it's uh, not. I adore it. Uh, th- I also remember, like, I basically had to rewatch all of Diana the Musical to edit <laughs> this one and being like, this is a fun show. <laughs> and that's the one that won the Razzie that year. That was the worst film. It did a, it swept. Like, it did really well in the yeah. Razzies. <laughs> Uh, episode 141, Space Jam, A New Legacy. This is our most popular episode of the Razzie Month. I can see where that would be the case. I I find this... I, I hated this movie so much. And part of me was trying to figure out if I was just old. For this one of like, is this just because I'm old? Yeah. Uh, because I I thought maybe, like, the first Space Jam wasn't very good, but we have the nostalgia goggles on it. Right. So this was the first one where I was like, mild. Well, I always stand by the fact that the original Space Jam was a really weird movie that happened to be a hit. Yeah. This is something that they thought was going to be a hit and just turned out to be a really weird movie. Yeah, and it's always very strange. With I, I really don't love the super delayed sequel. Yeah. I still haven't watched Hocus Pocus 2. Yeah, that is on the to-do list before Halloween. And I genuinely really love Hocus Pocus 1, which I just rewatched. Yeah. And I, I... With sequels in particular, I feel like they need a reason to exist. Right. And I feel like outside of money, please, and Space Jam 2 is money, please. Yeah, I think it was also, we have to use these characters in something soon. Yes. To keep the Looney Tunes alive, and they didn't do a good job of keeping the Looney Tunes alive in this. No. Then that brings us to a movie that I still, like, kind of think about on occasion. Infinite. Really? Because the only thing I think about with Infinite is uh, the fact that I called it in my files, Marky Mark and the Infinite Sadness. (laughs) I think of Jason Manzoukas often. Who got waterboarded with honey? That's like the only oh, yes. scene, that's <laughs> I the forget only his scene name. that really stands out to but me. But he gets honeyboarded. 
This was such an unmemorable movie to me. Oh, uh, really? I, yeah, I. It's just a loud, dumb sci-fi. I think it was movie. my favorite out of these. Uh, no, I like Diana more. I think when we did the rankings, I just kept being like, "Not Diana." Yeah, I think you're correct. Uh, because again, genre. I like musicals, so a bad musical. I will usually find something more to have fun with than just like, eh, I don't like loud action movies anyway that much. So th- this movie, even if it had been good in its genre, might not have done it for me. Yeah, I, t- I totally understand that feeling. Yeah, but then, I don't be honest, I don't have much to say about Infinite. Neither did our friends. So. Yep. Moving on. Yeah, I... Barely heard it, so. Uh, number 143, The Woman in the Window. Oh, oh. I hated this movie so much. Yeah. The way mental health is treated in this movie was so gross to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really hated this movie. Yeah, interestingly, uh, some of the kids I have teach have been writing about The Woman in the Window as their favorite book, which has baffled me. That's odd. I wonder, like, is it the book this movie is based on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, why? I thought maybe it was like a different book with a different title. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, this one was a bad film that was really poorly done. And... Ugh, I hated this movie so much. It This movie made me anxious. Mm-hmm. I re- yeah, I remember you, like, struggling to get through this. And... It's one of only a couple of Stay Doomed episodes total in the four years we've been running that has bothered me on that level. The yeah. other being Heathers. Yes, and Rambo. Rambo, I at least could get through. I hated Rambo and I was upset by it. Oh, we almost shut Rambo off. That's true. <laughs> you were like, if this happens, we are done. If if, if she dies, we are turning this movie off. And, and then, then she, she died She died instantly. moments later. I was like, Ugh. I, yeah, that was one of those ones I really, I forgot why I hated that movie. And then as soon as you said, if she dies, I was like, oh, that's right. I hated that. Oh, that movie. (sighs) Rambo was really bad. I think Rambo is still my worst of the Razzies that I can at least think of off the top of my head. I think for me, it was Woman in the Window. Woman Um, in the Window is not good. Yeah, like I, there's some times where you keep an episode happening because I would have turned something off. Uh, the description for Woman in the Window starts with, Despite our wishes and the cast, this is not Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it was a lot of the same cast as Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> Dear Evan Hansen, yeah. And, yeah, and then it was also the guy who was playing, um, who's now playing U.S. Agent. Yes, yes, the real Captain America. And I... <laughs> which I made that joke many times, which I need to state was a joke. Yeah, I I remember liking him in this, uh, but I liked him in a bad movie. Uh, real quick, I got to talk about uh, this comment from uh, the Danish guy reviews about Woman in the Window. Uh, he has two rules for cinema. One, give me a reason to care. And two, if I'm asking questions, you've clearly not entertained me enough. Yeah. <laughs> Which I really like. And... He ended his comment with, uh, damn you for reminding me about Southland Tales. Oh, yeah. Because there's a really weird moment in this episode I just want to bring up because I feel bad that I did it. Okay. There's a moment that like I kind of bring the episode to a halt because I go, pimps don't kill themselves or pimps don't commit suicide. Yeah. Which is a line from Southland Tales because one of our patrons really wanted us to review it. Right. And it kept not winning. And I was planning to drop a Southland Tales reference in every episode after this. Yeah. And forgot. (laughs) So I was wondering how many of those I could slip in without you noticing. And then I immediately failed the first time I tried. Yeah, because you would... It was just a weird throw. It was a really weird non sequitur. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, sometimes in... Particularly unenjoyable episode. I don't have time. You don't for have time for my, for my sass. <laughs> so I was just like, "You, no, stop doing bits. I want to get through this. I want to get to the part where we complain." <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then we ended out uh, Razzie Month with Karen, oh. which is such an interesting film. This is literally the most ham-handed movie I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, it was so bad. And I, like the whole time, I just remember sitting there being like, really? This is the movie? <laughs> Yeah, I it's I mean it opens with her washing Black Lives Matter uh sidewalk chalk off the page. Yeah. It is on the nose the whole time. And she lives in a neighborhood called like Plantation. Like it's it's so comically ham handed. Well what cracked me up is that there's actually a moment in the film where a character says, Oh, that's the Karen. And the other guy goes, yeah, that's Karen. It's like, her name actually is Karen? We were that literal with this? Oh my god. It's so odd. It's such a weird movie. It's every... I I get what it was trying to do. It just did it really poorly. Yeah. And failed to... It was trying to be a racial satire and just bungles it. So badly. Mm-hmm. So that's the end. That's the temporary end of Razzie of Month. Of Razzie Month, yes. Uh, next, we have Let's Join Josie. Joni. I'm sorry, Joni. I'm sorry. Which I think you did several times during I the I think show. you're right. But Let's Join Joni is the oldest pilot we could find. And This was fun. This was absolutely fun. And I really liked doing this one. Uh, numbers wise, it's one of our worst performing episodes, which is a shame because this is the stuff I really like doing. Yeah. I like the really strange, like forgotten stuff. So it's like, interesting on our pod bean, it doesn't go down much. Our, our pod bean. Well, cause I, I think there's more search terms at play on YouTube. Yes. So like something like space jam was something that was being searched at the time. Yeah. So I think that's why that does so much better. And I think that's the same thing with the Razzie movies, is I'm sure there's people who are trying to just find the Razzie movies online. Yeah, very true. Though I will say, like, uh, Karen and The Woman in the Window really underperform in terms of episodes. They are... They are less popular. Yeah, they're they're also not search-friendly. That's true. Like, if you go to YouTube and search Karen, you're going to get a hundred cell phone videos <laughs> that take place in a Target. Yeah, I think that's an interesting idea, is that we we do do better with more searchable terms. Mm-hmm. And I think things people do want to see, because I think we have the, like, people wanted to watch Space Jam, so they're interested in it. Diana, like, musical theater fans are very interested in musical theater failures. I'm a big fan of Waiting in the Wings. Yeah, Waiting in the Wings is a fantastic YouTube series. Uh, And they do a lot of either failed shows or uh, shows that are just oddities, whether they fail or not, like an Evil Dead the Musical. Yeah. Uh, That is not a failure. Just weird. Yeah, just odd. Uh, real quick, I forgot some Karen comments. Uh, Nancy says, Coke Daniels? No, thank you. I'm a Pepsi Daniels fan. Appreciate that joke. Uh, and the Danish Guy Reviews says, I listened to this episode while trying on every pair of pants in my closet. Thank you for that information. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was trying to see if they fit. In my mind, he was just trying to put them all on at once. Yes. That's the way I choose to imagine that. Uh, then we, we break from uh, structure for a little bit and we go on the road to uh, Zen Kai Con. On the roads tend to be, there is no way we'll get an episode out unless we do it on the road. Yeah. We don't, we choose not to, we, we don't want to do them all that often. Yeah, I think we have two this season. Because they're usually not very good episodes, comparatively. Yeah, they're, they're kind of just hanging out with, with us. For, like... An hour. An hour. Uh, This is just something that I've always done where it's like, we gotta kill time because we're in the car forever. Yeah, we might... Maybe we'll do one next time we have a 
a late night commute from a wrestling show. Yeah, maybe we'll throw in an extra one or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, not much to say about it. Zenkai Khan was fun that year. Yeah. And then the, the heavy hitter, 146, by request, we go back to the movie mausoleum for Dear Evan Hansen. Yes, this this one actually overperforms on Podbean, too. Yeah, it's a little bit better on YouTube as well, but God, it's so funny. Like, we almost watched it again recently for fun because we were with our friends. Yes, and we also watched, we avoided watching Jenny Nicholson's Unnecessary Takedown. Yeah. That's her turn. I think she, an unnecessarily long takedown. Yeah, thorough, I think. Thorough takedown of Dear Evan Hansen. But now that I've listened to it, we hit a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Which I found really interesting. The kiss, the mother-son kiss is so terrifying. Our friend, when we saw it in theaters, did in fact scream. Yeah, it's terrifying. (laughs) Oh man, dear Evan Hansen, like, what a gem in bad movies. Like... It's just spectacular in how awful it is. It's so much fun. Uh, it handles a lot of very sensitive subjects uh, beyond poorly. Just, there's poorly, and then the, this is like in its own neighborhood of bad. But it was, it's so much fun to watch. That mosaic at the end of You Will Be Found yeah. is never not funny. It's so funny. Musicals are really, really, really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just watched Tick, Tick, Boom recently. Yes. Which is an exquisitely directed Unbel- musical. It blew me away. But a lot of musicals, it's it's very hard to get people to suspend the disbelief that you need to get them to suspend mm-hmm. in a musical. Mm-hmm. And Dear Evan Hansen nails it once with Sincerely Me. Because it's so cool. Yeah. And so much fun. Yeah, Sincerely Me is legitimately a song I put on on occasion and just enjoy listening to. The actor who plays Connor just does an amazing job in that song. Uh, it's genuinely one... It, if the whole movie had been that good... I, it's interesting. Dear Evan Hansen has really uh, been the victim of a big backlash yeah it was huge when it opened it only opened about six years ago on broadway Mm -hmm. and was big it won the tony for best musical that year whole great comp justice for the great comet um but it became this whole thing and then as time wore on people got less and less sympathetic to evan and kind of thought about the show more yeah and there's always been a lot of distaste for how the character of Connor is treated. Mm-hmm. And how his death is not really ever really addressed in a meaningful way. Yeah, it's just advertisement, really, the whole time. Uh, it's weird. I just watched uh, an internet history uh, documentary, uh, internet historian, that was reminding me of this. Uh, it is about... Uh, a guy who got stuck in a cave and like the plan to uh, get him out and free him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he unfortunately, uh, well, I, I, don't, I guess I don't want to spoil it, but uh, I think I just did. Um, but the way that this event was monetized, and this was like the 1920s, yeah. reminded me of how Connor is treated in Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. Where, like, he stops being a person and starts being a commodity. Yeah. I was like, huh, that's weird that this is activating these parts of my brain. It It's genuinely... It, it's become a major reason people don't like the show. And that a lot of people feel... That Evan should pay more dearly. Yeah. Than he does in either the film or the show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, oh, it, it is a masterclass in bad films. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, though. It is a lot of fun. Uh, and then we have a question for you. Yeah. From Smug Alice. All right. Uh, is A Freak Like Me the best song from Turn Off the Dark? Okay. So... 
Uh, I think it's the best received song in the show. But for song I actually listen to, I genuinely really like Mary Jane's song, If the World Should End. Yeah. I genuinely very much enjoy that song. Uh, that's one of the songs that I think when we watched Turn Off the Dark, mm-hmm. you realized you knew. Yeah. I've, I've definitely heard you sing it around the house. Because it, it just, I, it's a song that also sounds really good in my voice, so I like singing it. Mm-hmm. So it's not my favorite, but it's probably the objective best song. But if you were going to do a pop hit, you'd probably go with either Rise Above or Boy Falls from the Sky. Yeah. But uh, Boy Falls from the Sky used to be on my workout list. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so there's your answer. I still say Freak Like Me. Freak Like Me. Freak Like Me is the... Like me needs company. Freak Like Me is probably the best song objectively. I, I agree. It's a, it's a, it's a bop. Uh, so then after that, we have Clerks, which I made a big stink of making sure we did Clerks for episode 147 because 47 was the animated series. Yeah. Uh, this is not great. It's just interesting that there is a lot of staying power in the Stay Doom show and, and our lives in Clerks the Animated Series. Yes. Yes, because you know what we constantly do anytime we see a dog in a car? Some variant of, Oh my God, Bear is driving. How can that be? Oh no, Bear is driving. How can this (laughs) be? How could this be? There's also an episode recently, I think it's during Freaks and Geeks, where uh, we compare it to the Is It Safe? From Marathon Man, which is echoed in the which animated is echoed in, cause I, I had to explain it to you. I include the clip. Is it safe? Is it safe? Stop it! I just want some smokes! <laughs> I just want some smokes! Is it safe? From uh, Clerks the Animated Series in the episode of Freaks and Geeks. Yay! I just want some smokes! I'll probably add it again right here. So, uh, Clerks, the, the live action, though. Don't really have anything to say. It's kind of an episode that came and went. Uh, it's a, a failed pilot. It's yeah, the show doesn't... is... It, it's a very generic version. It's the bad habit that sometimes develops with sitcoms of trying to slap an existing property on a script and being like, yeah, yeah this is Clerks. And it's like, it's really not. No. Uh, a lot of people have been reaching out to me uh, asking my thoughts for Clerks 3 which I have not seen, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I've heard one thing about it, and I'm uh, not sure that I'm gonna... I I get the feeling that my opinion on Clerks 3 is not going to be positive. Well, you've never seen Clerks 2. You've seen Clerks. I've seen chunks of Clerks 2. You've seen Clerks... Okay, so do you know who Pillow Pants is? I do not. Okay, that's the best part of Clerks yeah, 2. <laughs> it's one of those things of like, it was playing in a place I was in, but I was not always in the room. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, like... You were just walking through and catching bits of it? Yeah, like, I'd watch five minutes of it and then go, to like, to the kitchen and hang out with the people who were in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited because it's very meta, and meta's, like, my thing. Yes. Uh, so, I'm, I'm definitely going to sit down and watch it as soon as possible, but I get all this other stuff to watch. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'll get to it. I, looking at my notes in Clerks, man, girls in the 90s would put up with anything. <laughs> Uh, then, episode 148, an episode I'm so glad we did. YouTube Live. Smash that subscribe button, guys. That was such an interesting just look back at a subculture of youths in 2008. We rewatched the Bo Burnham part. Yeah, it, well, it's interesting in that, like, Bo Burnham's the only one that gets out of that alive. <laughs> Seriously. Like, everyone else who's pictured in that is just gone. Like, the the only people that we recognized were Bo Burnham and Philip DeFranco for literally three frames. It was like, ah, there he was. And then it was over. And now all those people are just gone. There's a great moment where they talk about the plane being called YouTube Air and you and I, like, discuss what the plane would be called now. No. <laughs> Planey McPlane face. Planey McPlane face. Uh, Alice says it was better than YouTube Rewind 2019. 
which I agree with. Everybody hated that one. Uh, and the Danish guy reviews says, I just want to brag. Uh, I actually worked for Parental Floss. And I was like, oh, we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> we're hug friends. I hug Brent when I see him. <laughs> we're hug friends. But yeah, apparently uh, the Danish guy reviews was actually translating uh, Brent's work into Danish for him. Oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually, like, incredibly difficult. Yes. Because translating lyrics, uh, it's not really straight translation. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's hard because there's got to be rhymes and syllables and all that good stuff. Yeah, and rhythm. Mm-hmm. And but, it's not even number of syllables they have to fit. Yeah. Lyrics are tough. Lyrics are very tough. Uh, just ask Dear Evan Hansen. And, because uh, that, that's his full name. Uh, but yeah, YouTube Well, you know Live. that RuPaul bit, right? Oh, yeah. I talked to ben Deer. Platt. Ben Platt, who plays Deer. Who plays Deer. Uh, but uh, YouTube Live is such a just fascinating thing to, like, sit through. It's like, is this really going to be five minutes of a guy beatboxing? Sure oh is. Oh, my God, it is. What are we doing? Why are the Mythbusters here? Just Katy Perry's line reading... Oh, thank God you're 18 at least. At least. Haunts me. Yeah. Because it's so incredibly creepy. It is. What? Th- thank you, Mrs. Perry. Hilarious. <laughs> Bo Burnham's the best. Uh, then we have a bonus episode that drops. Mm. Uh, this is the crowdfund crypt episode of the reality show host tier list. <laughs> and I believe... This is the first of two, oh, I think we have COVID episodes. Yes. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, I'm looking at this, and I think there's actually an act, like I'm looking at the dates, and we don't actually, we don't actually have nothing come out. Uh, oh, we, like, we did not miss an episode. Something goes out. But, like, um, there's... Actually, I think there's three episodes that might be in the I Think COVID Was Involved camp. Yeah, looking at the dates... Uh, I, like, I know when the dates were. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know the 26th was one of them. It's not, because I'm actually... I'm reading the descriptions. Uh, so, we do this bonus episode. I'm just going to run through this real quick, and then we'll go back. Uh, but... We did the we dropped the crowdfund crypt, mm-hmm. and I say we had a bit of a dysfunction at the junction this week. So something went wrong. Then we do stick around. Yeah. Then and then I get COVID. Yes, because we do the plot game as a crowdfund crypt that we drop, and it says, "Hey, grave robbers, uh, Noah and Laurie here. Our voices are currently working about at about forty percent." Yeah. So we were just all messed up. Then we did One Way Out, well, you're, part one. You're super nice. Hmm. You were actually doing okay with that one. Mm-hmm. I was out. You were out. Yeah, you kind of, sometimes right. if I'm sick, you say it's like both of us so that I don't feel bad about not being able to do it. Right. Because then we dropped part one of One Way Out. And then the next one's a bonus episode that you Chip do in and, isolation. Of Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers that I do alone that's under 10 minutes. Uh, because you were, you were about, you were at the point where you were allowed in the house with a mask on. Mm-hmm. Like, that we would be, could be in the same room with masks. Yeah. So, because you, we're saying I got COVID. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is I never tested positive. So when you did test positive, we did isolate. Yeah. So, we ended up watching Chippendale together in the same room in, like, N95s. Because yeah. you, you were afraid I was going to get it because we didn't really know for sure whether I had had it or not. Looking back, I think I did. Because I also did not get it after mm-hmm. that. And we we were a little, admittedly a bit less careful after initially getting it. Uh, after, obviously, proper isolation and what have you. Uh, so yeah, so that that was this like month of of the show was yeah. dealing with that. Genuinely not sure what happened with reality show tier list. I'm sure if I looked at a calendar, I could find out. Yeah, I'm not sure that I don't know if this might have been when we 
canceled Bong? Maybe? I don't know what happened here, but for some reason we could not get an episode out. So we did. We also thought it was important to eventually drop this episode because it was something we referenced a lot. Yes. We referenced the reality show uh, tier list or the list, big list of white guys very often. And this started the bit of Matt Pat is everything I don't like about myself. Yes. So I was like, I think we need to include this in our canon here so that people understand that joke. Yes, because I, I do. It, it's so funny because I still cannot get through a lot. Like, there are YouTubers that I can put on and watch for hours. Yeah. Defunct Land. Mm-hmm. I can Defunct Land, Babish, Sophia Nygaard. Mm-hmm. I can put Sophia on. And just let her go. Mm-hmm. And like eight hours later, be like, I am still watching this. Eh. Yeah. Matt Pat, I can get through a video at a time. Yeah. Because his persona is just, I. it's not something I can just like vibe with for a long period. <laughs> it doesn't vibe right. I, I don't think he's evil or bad. Right, right. I, it, I just don't vibe with him. Uh, so... Th- I have a comment here from Nancy who says, uh, I remember J.D. Roth from an old TV show. He should be in Tipple territory. And uh, Nancy, you're wrong. He's the hometown boy and he's the best. Oh, Nancy, it was, uh, sounds like Nancy's right. Nancy. No, no, I've already said she was wrong. Hometown boy is the best. I believe. Best. Moving on. I believe Nancy agrees with everything. Moving on. (laughs) The reality show tier list is a really fun one because it's just me an- me annoying Noah the second most of any episode. <laughs> yes. There's another uh, crowdfund crypt episode where I just... Yeah. You went out of your way to break my heart a few times. Uh, and you can check that out on our Patreon. Patreon.com slash plus two comedy. The Rogues Gallery tier list. Yes. Uh, that'll, that, that is probably one of my favorite crowdfund crypts that we've done. Uh, anyway, getting back to this, though. Depending on how flu season goes this year. Yeah. Uh, Stay Doom number 149 is Stick Around, which was a pilot with Andy Kaufman as a robot. This is another one that's, like, especially weird that I'm really glad we did. Yes. Because this is something that, like, you can really spend time, like, what were they thinking? Where did they think this? Why did they think this was good? Love it. I, I love this. This is the kind of show I really like doing. Uh, because it's just such a weird curio. And I like doing shows that people don't necessarily already know about. Because sometimes the shows that are well-trod ground, you kind of go like, what can I bring to the table? Right. And they're a lot harder than this where I'm like, who else is going to do this? Who yeah. else is watching this? No one. Literally, find me that person. I'd like to talk to them because, my God. Yeah. Uh, Comments for this one include, Nancy says, I watched this to see if you would mention heart beeps, and you did. (laughs) So, well done there. Also, there's a very interesting argument we kind of get into. Not so much an argument, but discussion. Of the old joke, I don't do windows. Yes. And, like, why is that funny? Uh, the Danish guy did some research about, like, when Windex came out and the different, like, cleaners that were used. Danish guy did some research. Yes, so thank you. Uh, and, do you uh, still do that jingle? All the- whenever I do research. So very I occasionally. Do. I do. It's All right, so here's a little bit about, like, the editing process. Uh, I have all the songs, because I use the same, uh, the same project. And I just like swap out the audios. There's a a few occasions where there's an artifact from a past uh, episode in the new episode. So there's been a few episodes where there's been graphics that pop up that are unrelated that I accidentally left in. Huh. Uh, But I have all the songs. I don't remember where some of them came from because... I know, and I haven't listened to it in a while, and I guess I'll put it in here, but I know in my uh, my like list of assets is something that's just called Bible Talk. Editor Noah here just wanted to clarify something I found in editing. When 
Jim and Job have this conversation about the sculpture and having all the parts, they actually then make a point to show that Jim drives away without the Bible. So while Job may be implying that he needs all the pieces, he does not actually give him one of the most important pieces, and that being the Bible. It's a, just a little mistake. It's easy to see that it's implied that he would give him the Bible, but he doesn't. Jim, in fact, drives off without it. Just wanted to clarify that. Huh. And I have no idea what it is, but I used it in an episode of Stay Doomed, and I don't remember what it is. And I used to have all of the songs from Little Mermaid. I'm not sure if I still do, but that was like Oprah Talk and Facts About Fish. That was a fun one. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was truly a fun... Little Mermaid was a really fun episode. I'd love to be able to find a few more children-geared, shorter-run shows yeah. like that. Yeah, that's definitely on the to-do list. Um, then we move on to uh, the the plot game, which is one of my favorite like little car games that we play when we're bored. Yeah. Of just like, yeah, what do you think the plot of this is? Like, things that you have a vague idea or vague memory of. Uh, I highly recommend this episode because it's fun. Uh, apparently, at some time, at some point during this episode, we use the phrase "that's putting lipstick on a dog," which it, is weird because it's usually lipstick on a pig. Yeah, it really upset the Danish guy reviews as something for some reason is especially gross. The idea of putting lipstick on a dog. Was there a reason we did it? I didn't review the the tape, so I don't know. Because like we both know what it is. But yeah, I, I don't know. One of us might have just misused that phrase. Uh, so then we go on to One Way Out, which we wanted to do so bad. Yes. Because it is the show that kind of gave us the idea of doing Stay Doomed, is we watched this weird one-hit wonder on Netflix, and or one-season wonder, rather, and fell in love with it. This is our worst performing episode on YouTube. Is it really? Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. One Way Out Part 2 performs markedly worse than One Way Out Part 1 on Podbean. Yeah, I mean, I guess they just, they don't come back for it or whatever. But I think it might be that, like, the break in format that happens here. Because, like, we're chugging along pretty well in terms of hits uh, through YouTube Live. And then it kind of falls off a cliff at uh, the crowdfund crypt episode that comes in. So maybe yeah. because we break schedule, we lose people. Maybe. And then there's just a drop off. But yeah, the for some reason, One Way Out super underperforms. Uh, it's also the first time we tried like splitting things up because I have COVID. Uh, but just to sing the praises of One Way Out a little bit more. God, I love that show. It's uh, a fun show. We we wanted to uh, have Jonathan on the show. Jonathan was going through physical therapy for his terrible accident, so he didn't really have time to talk to us. Uh, but maybe one day we'll do Danger Man? Yeah. And we'll do his other show because I love him. He's a great Twitter follow. I know I said that in the episode, but... Jonathan's a great Twitter follow. I highly recommend you checking him out. And check out that episode. It's good. It's interesting. I love that episode. I, I admittedly, with uh, the Stay Doomed Twitter account, I try to follow as many people from shows as possible, but it means I don't see much of anybody. Yeah. Because there's so many people that I feel like I never see any specific people on Twitter. Right. So part of me is like, when you say, like, someone's a good Twitter follow, I'm like, I have no idea. Because if I get a lot of uh, Jason Blum tweets, a person I do not follow. I get a lot of, like, hey, a lot of people you follow follow Jason Blum. And I'm like, I, no. <laughs> he makes movies that do well, not TV shows that don't. Yeah. Uh, we did get a comment from uh, the Danish guy reviews on this episode of, hey, you guys watch Taskmaster? Yeah! Because we really wanted to put him in Taskmaster. <laughs> I love Taskmaster. Oh. Ta Taskmaster is one of our favorite shows. 
I love Taskmaster so much. That's a great right before bed show for us. Love Taskmaster. Uh, then I review Chip and Dale for a bit. You can tell that I'm like sick because the thumbnail for Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers is incorrect. Is it really? Yeah. the The thing about the way I edit the show is I the majority of how it looks on YouTube is how I want the thumbnail to look because it has like the title in it. Mm-hmm. But uh. If I don't manually put in the thumbnail, it picks YouTube picks three random like screenshots, and it's been like programmed to like look for faces, not text, to be the screenshot. Okay. So the thumbnail for that episode is just Chip looking sad, huh? And I was too sick and too tired to ever fix it. So it is still broken. As of now, maybe by the time this episode goes up, I'll fix it. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. Yeah, I, I usually, when I revisit the episodes, do so on Spotify. Okay. So when you tell me things that happen on YouTube, I'm like, oh. Because even if I do pull an episode up on YouTube, I usually am not actively watching it. Sometimes I'll go back and watch it if there's a clip. Yeah. But most of the time I'm actually listening to it on Spotify. So that's why I'm like, oh yeah, videos. And speaking of clips, it's time for the bane of my existence. The most frustrating episode we ever put out. Four WWE pilots. So, few things about this one. So we watched all these episodes, and I believe I pulled the clips off of Peacock, which is really hard to do. All four of these episodes are available on YouTube. (laughs) All four of them are very easily found on YouTube. Oh, no. Uh, Two, on YouTube, this episode of Stay Doomed was blocked to a point where it was unable to be seen no less than four times. Wow. Because the WWE was like, you're using our footage. Screw you. Blocked. And what happens when uh, that happens is I have the choice to either go back and take the visuals out Mm -hmm. and re-edit it so it's just the audio and then sometimes you'll go through. Okay. Uh, I often have to pitch up and speed up the audio. Okay, so it doesn't get picked up as easy? Yeah, and I usually like reverse the frames and all this other stuff, but we still got nailed for this. Or there's a little button you can press that says, just cut this audio. Mm -hmm. So in the YouTube version of 4 WWE Pilots, there's quite a few moments where it's things like, yeah, and then Gallo says, and that was a weird thing to say. Uh... Because it has to cut out his speech. Uh, And like what upset me most about this is I was worried about it for this episode. So I uploaded this one early so it would get checked and it came back clean. And then after I published it, this happened like a week later. Huh. So yeah, it's very, very frustrating. Uh, Because you you have it up on Spotify right now. Is that what you're looking at? Uh, I had it up on Podbean. Okay. Can you easily see how long of an episode it is? One hour, 12 minutes, and 21 seconds. Yeah, there's 10 full seconds missing from uh, the YouTube version. 10 seconds? Yeah, which is so upsetting because that means that I was getting blocked for clips that were only a few seconds long. Ugh. So annoying. So frustrating. Uh, Comments about it. Yeah? Um, A lot of people are complaining that this episode has ads on it. Really? Yeah. Because of the WWE footage. Yeah. So was... originally, because it right now it's just public. It is. I don't have any copyright claims on this. Originally, they allowed it to be on, but they had to monetize it because I was using their footage. Then that wasn't good enough, and they forced me to take things down. Because if you get hit with a copyright claim, what happens is they put ads on it wherever they want. Yeah. At this way, the thing that you took, Uh, footage from can get money off of it because i'm not sure if you guys know this but we as plus two comedy and we as stay doomed we are a non-monetized youtube channel 
Uh, we do not have the, enough subscribers to be a uh, monetized channel because you need a thousand, and we lost a bunch randomly. Uh, they probably did like a bot purge. I guess I don't know what happened, but uh, we lost our eligibility to be a monetized channel because we were monetized for years. We were monetized before plus do or before stay doomed, and then they took all of that away. And it's fine that we're not monetized. We have Patreon. Like, that covers all the expenses for uh, the show running. We don't make any money off of the show, but we don't lose any money off the show. And if you have a copyright claim, you have to pay for it through advertising on your YouTube videos. And we have comments that are like, wow, I got two unskippable 20-second ads. Yeah. It's like, sorry. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it. Blame the WWE. <sighs> You're right. Yeah. Uh, the Danish Guy Review also says that Robot Unicorn Attack's really good. Because that's the episode where I sing the Robot Unicorn Attack song. Yay. I was going to for like a hiatus episode just do a let's play of Robot Unicorn Attack. And I realized that I've already done that on the gaming channel. So, really? Yeah, they already have a video of me playing Robot Unicorn Attack. So you can check that out over on Plus Two Comedy Gaming. Anyway, staying with wrestling, it's time for Shark Rumble slash Jackass Does Shark Week. Yeah, this was one of those ones where we were planning to do Shark Rumble. And it was so short and there was so little to it. That we looked at each other and we're like, we, this isn't going to be an episode. Yeah, it's insane just because, like, we were so sure of what the show was going in. And then it wasn't anything like what we thought. We thought it was going to be comparing sharks as if they were in some sort of battle. Yeah. Not Drew McIntyre kind of wants to get close to a shark. Yeah, like... Wants to look at one in an aquarium while also wet. Yeah, it was very... Lame. It was really lame. So we just, in a panic, were like, well, what kind of goes with this? And we watched Jackass, which I'm glad we did. Because, like, there's some really interesting stuff in Jackass Shark Week. Yeah, and that actually ended up with incredible... Um, it ended up being much more interesting because of what had happened to Poopies. Mm -hmm. Which is... A, what a great sentence. Uh, but it ended up being something we could talk about. Because it's very interesting to see, you know, how they've done all these jackass movies and it ended up being this weird one-off special that caused this major, major injury to a new cast member. Yeah. Do, will we ever do a Shark Week special again? Probably not. No, it, it has to be quirkier than your average Shark Week special. Yeah. You know, that's somebody who pops up on the Stay Doomed Twitter feed all the time is The Scientist. Because I followed him. Oh, the, the from Jackass? Yeah, because I, I never go to latest tweets. It's always just kind of who the Twitter algorithm decides to show me when I log onto the Stay Doomed account. Yeah. And... You really love shark science. Yeah, it, it thing, it's like, you like shark guy, right? Uh, for this episode, Nancy says, Jabberjaw is the best shark. Agree or disagree? Agree. Really? Over Blahaj. No, wait, Blahaj! No. Brody, I'm sorry! And yeah, we have a Blahaj in our home. So I thought you would go with Blahaj. Then you got Charlie and who is Jaws. And Charlie. Charlie? Who is Isn't his name? Bruce is Bruce, Jaws. Bruce, Bruce, excuse Charlie me. Charlie Shark was my car. Was your car, yeah. Because I my car had like one of those big fins. Mm -hmm. So I called it Charlie Shark. It was my first car. Yeah. It was the car I had when you and I met. Yes. And then you got Bruce the Shark. You got Bruce the Shark from uh, Finding Nemo. You got your street sharks. You got your card sharks. Jabberjaw, pretty good shark, though. But uh, Blahaj is more cuddly. Let's then move on to something that I had tried to do for years, and we finally did. Yeah. And that was an award show. We yes. did Cybermania 94. This, I, again, very glad we did this. Didn't really perform that well, uh, but... I've wanted to do a reality show, not a reality show, an award show for a really long time that only ran once 
And this is a perfect example of just like not knowing your audience, not knowing what you're doing, just being unprepared. It This is just a beautiful train wreck. Yeah, I just thinking about it, it's such a strange moment in time. And I love that it had the ads. Yeah, that we got the Even though they got very, very repetitive, it was still really interesting to see how bizarre video game ads were and how bewildered the network Mm. was at who the audience for this was. Because usually you can figure out who the network thinks is watching based on the ads you're seeing. Mm -hmm. This one was so strange because they were like, ah! Yeah. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is here, so kids maybe. Leslie Nielsen's also here, so adults maybe. Let's throw in some watch commercials. Uh, I just also want to point out that in this we talk a lot about G4. So Connor Fields commented, Hey, G4 is back. G4 is dead. Yes. As of this recording, G4 died last week. Yeah, uh, we are currently discussing what a G4 episode of Stay Doomed would look like. Yeah, I don't know if we want to just do all of G4 for that less than a year that it existed or if we just kind of like handpick some shows out like there's God of Work there's Arena there's the small little attack of the shows that they did you can do that yeah we're we're considering that that'll be something we discuss during the hiatus yeah and we I'd also love to do some of the like original G4 material like I'd love to do Game On which was like their weird game show I do not want to do Hurl no. No. Hurl. <laughs> I bring. I, I love this fact about Hurl. You're, you're looking at me like I know what Hurl oh, is. Oh, okay. So Hurl was a game show where it was an, an eating competition. Oh, good. And you had to eat. I, I can somehow figure out the rest of this. Oh, thing. no. I, oh, really? What do you think happens next? Well, I know what Hurl means. Okay. So four contestants will compete in eating something. Not necessarily gross. Okay. But like. I don't know. Let's say chicken pot pie. Okay. The three, if I'm remembering this correctly, uh, the three that eat the most will move on to the next round. The next round is usually something like riding a tilter whirl. Oh, okay. If you throw up, you're out. If so you, that's kind of what I was expecting. If you don't throw up, you then move on to another eating round. And I don't want to cover this because I think th- I'm not going to have anything more to say it's than what like I'm trashed. saying right now. Yeah. Uh, the commercials for it had reviews. And the reviews were uh, the new hit G4 show. And it was credited to a random Twitter user. Okay. Like no one of importance. And then... I think it was like Rolling Stone magazine says, It's gastronomic molestation. It will bring about the imminent destruction of the human race. It's like, I don't think that was a positive review there, G4. I think they were saying you were doing the devil's work right now. Uh, yeah, so there. We just did, G, we just did G4's hurl. Because I don't, I don't want to watch any more than it. I already have of that. <laughs> uh... But yeah, we are working on figuring out what G4 is going to be. Yeah. Uh, so then we do. We have a huge uptick in uh, in hits for this one when we do something a little bit different and we go to Nickelodeon Universe. So as we start to go through and we've hit so many of the big shows and so many of the heavy hitters with One Season Wonders, we, we've kind of been considering where Stay Doomed goes from here. Mm-hmm. And... This is kind of a fun occasional segment that we've started of if we travel somewhere and we're kind of like, I don't know, this is going to last forever. We think about it and we, this, this felt like a place that defunct land's going to cover in yeah two years. <laughs> I think the video is already done. He just adds a couple minutes to it at the end and he's just waiting for the shutdown notice to happen. Yeah. It should be noted. It's still around as of now. Yes. And one of the things we talk about in it is the uh, the ropes course. The Legends of the Hidden Temples ropes course, which 
I have found it has reopened. It reopened a few weeks after we went. Unbelievable. Uh, it reopened a few weeks after they went because they had, once high schools let out, they were able to get more, uh, they were able to hire more people. Right. Once colleges and high schools were done. Yeah. So Nickelodeon Universe, fantastic episode. It's very popular. Nobody commented on it, which I think is odd for how popular it was. But I love these field trip episodes, and I also didn't have to do as much editing. Yeah. It does say uh, in the description, it's a weird one. Noah and Lara are tired from a long weekend at too many games. Yes. So this happened instead of an on the road. Uh, but it also helps because I don't have to, like, find and dig up clips and all this other stuff. Currently, Jimmy Neutron's Atom Smasher is closed. <laughs> Still? Uh, yes, and so is Zuma Zoomers, which has been closed this whole time. And the Shimmer and Shine Jumping Genies. Oh. I just pulled up what is closed currently at, Amer- at uh, Nickelodeon Universe. Very silly. It means Timmy's Halfpipe and yeah. Shredder reopened. Oh, wow. Wait, does that mean the Turtles is open? Yeah. Shredder. No, Shredder we Oh, rode. we went on Shredder. Yes, this is implying that the Turtles is open. Wow, because like one of our big findings was like, I don't think this turtle ride's ever opening again because it's so dusty. They haven't done a test run in years or months probably. Yeah. But I guess I guess they figured it out. Do we have to go back? Do we no. have to go back and do it again? Uh, not for the amount of money they wanted us to spend on uh, that place. True, true. Uh, so no. Uh, I think the next potential is the uh, the Cartoon Network Hotel out in Pennsylvania. Yeah, you'd like I to feel like, do that? I feel like it's something that fits. Okay. Especially with, like, the sharks circling Cartoon Network. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know what's going to happen to that hotel and those properties. So that might be something we want to do in Season 5. 5, yeah. Uh, so next we have... Uh, and an episode that has a couple dislikes, mm. uh, and that's Legends of the Hidden Temple. Uh, this is interesting. This one also does really well, and I remember I promoted this on uh, Reddit. I went to R the CW and promoted this, and a lot of people responded with, "They remade Legends of the Hidden Temple on R the CW." Yeah, so they they didn't know this existed, which I thought was interesting, uh, and it was. A lot of responses of like, oh, I can't believe I missed this. I bet it was awesome. It's like, you didn't listen to the show. And it wasn't awesome. You wouldn't have liked it. <laughs> uh, I did get a lot of people actually saying it was a good show. So apparently we were wrong in hating it. But I still hate this. I I thought this was just so poorly done. Uh, they, it's just that bad, like... It, it was no longer a real. It was no longer a game show. It was more of a reality show. Like, no, show me the games. Stop. I don't want to stop and listen to your talking head while you're busy running and trying to catch coconuts. Yeah, like I just pulled up the episode to see what the comments on it were, uh, just because I was curious. And a lot of people were genuinely bu- like, there was a couple comments that were genuinely bummed that there wasn't going to be another season. Yeah. Uh, I also, on that episode, we got uh, Pepper and Fanatic requesting that we do Come On Over to Barney's House as an episode of Stay Doomed, which I think is like a VHS Barney thing. Sure. It's it's not quite what we do, but I don't know. We've done a lot of weird stuff. We did Nickelodeon Universe in the previous episode that we talked about, so maybe. Uh, Also, Jim M. brought up a good point. Uh, I talk about how in Legends of the Hidden Temple, there's the room of the secret password. Yes. And one of the secret passwords is Klaatu, Ferrato, Nictu, mm-hmm. which I was like, ah, it's an Evil Dead reference. It's actually not. It's a The Day the Earth Stood Still reference that is then referenced in Army of Darkness. Huh. So just wanted to correct that. Army of Darkness is referencing The Day the Earth Stood Still. Ah, so then, time for a very special episode. This this replaced uh, what probably would have been an on the road because we were at the East Coast Gaming Expo. Yeah, this is an odd one, but like odd in a really fun way. Yeah, this is our interview with Chucky's Place, a team of unbelievably talented 
fans of Chuck E. Cheese that are trying to bring back the animatronics. Yeah, this is a such this a cool group. Blew me away. I'm so glad we had time to just sit down and talk with them, or at least Laura got to. I had to work a camera. Uh, but this is one of our most popular. These are one of our most liked episodes. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Absolutely love the fact that we got to do this. But I need to talk about the scheduling here. Yeah. These are the episodes in order of Stay Doomed uh, in the summer. Nick Universe, Legends of the Hidden Temple, Interview with Chuck E. Cheese Place, WWE's Girls Gone Wild Spring Break Spectacular. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Indeed. Whoops. And, like, starting <laughs> starting at Nick Universe, we kind of have a big uptick in hits. Yeah. Like, we kind of get on a nice roll, and Legends of the Hidden Temple does better, and then the interview does even better. And then WWE Girls Gone Wild does really well. Probably because people think it's... But <laughs> it's one of our most disliked episodes. So I'm sure if I went into like watch time of this, because like our runtime's an hour, seven minutes, which is what you would think like a rip of this pay-per-view would run. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I could see that being an issue with this uh, particular particular show. People f- mistaking it for being the special. Mm-hmm. And then being angry when it's not. It's, yeah. This is an episode, and I remember our patrons had, like, a very strong reaction to this episode. Yeah. Of, like... This is very interesting. This is an episode of your show I will never go back to. Yes. And it's probably an episode that we will never go back to. But I'm also really glad we did it. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting thing. It made me so uncomfortable to watch. This is mm-hmm. another one that, like, I didn't want to watch this after anymore. Like, I just, it uh, made yeah. me feel sick to I watch I was it. expecting it to be so silly. And it wasn't. Because I was just like, oh, this will be a WWE show that's naughty. Yeah. And instead, it was a really gross Girls Gone Wild show that WWE was partially involved in. And it was just like, ick. Uh, it's, yeah, it's absolutely terrible. Uh, it is the top performing episode of this season. Oh. Uh, I do not recommend you go and give it a listen. Um... Comments include, uh, so is this like Glow? No. No. No, it's not Glow. No, friend. Uh, Nancy says, I haven't listened yet, but I bet this aged poorly. Nancy is correct. Yup. Uh, but also Connor says, uh, request for you to do the lost episode of Sesame Street. Which I think, I think I push for it during an episode. I don't know if it's yeah, this one. I know we mention it, so that's always been something. And also, Terror Tunes? Do you know what Terror Tunes is? I've never heard of it, uh, but it has officially been requested. Uh, so yeah, Girls Gone Wild, not great. Not great, don't recommend it. Uh, I think we do a good job covering it. We say some interesting stuff in it, which is like one of the reasons I haven't taken it down. Yeah. Uh, because like, I don't, I, I think we do a good job. I don't think it's a very enjoyable episode and I don't think it's a very good representation of the feeling you get when listening to our show. <laughs> it's a bummer because when you search for Stay Doomed, a lot of the top episodes that come up are things people mistake for. Like... Yes. I There are episodes I almost want to unlist or pull down. Um, Just to, completely? Yeah, they're not the most valuable episodes we do. Although I do actually really... I think we do a good job with, like, the Song of the South episode, which appears on... Which is one of the ones I'm, like, thinking of. Well, I can I can tell you right now, to give you a quick look, uh, the number one episode of our show is a Medea family funeral, which is episode 71, which is 100% because people think it's the movie. Yes. Uh, this is also back when... 
we didn't have the custom Stay Tuned thumbnails. And it, yeah. it just said Medea's family funeral. Uh, so there's like a lot of comments from people who are like, uh, you know, this isn't the movie and stuff like that. There's also a couple he, of... Here's a, like an interesting point about it though. Uh, it is our most popular. The watch rate is terrible. However, the like ratio on it is 57.5%. Likes versus dislikes. It has 100 likes. Oh. Uh, there's also uh, some comments on Medea's uh, that says things like, New subscriber. Uh, will you need uh, you need to watch something you don't know anything about, and then you'll have a little insight to talk about. Oh no, wait a second. That's not. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. This is it's phrased weirdly, but uh, well, you need to watch something you don't know anything about, and then you'll have a little insight to talk about on the podcast. Have a holiday that's wonderful and blessed. <laughs> I, I was like, oh. I actually took that to mean, like, I, I felt bad because I know part of the main thing we talk about in that episode is how we know we're not the target audience for it. Yes. And how uh, bizarre it feels, how it doesn't entirely feel like it's an appropriate Razzie movie because it felt like it was targeting its audience. Yeah. And I, I'm not positive that comes through as well as I hoped. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I remember when we did this episode being like, I feel weird about this being a Razzie movie. Yeah, because... It felt like we were attacking people. I, I feel like... Not we, but like the Razzies. Especially now that we know how the Razzies work. Yeah. Like, I feel like most people who nominated Medea didn't see the movie. They were just like, ah, another one. Yeah, because I remember there being actually quite a good movie in there. Mm-hmm. But not necessarily... But the Medea parts were not good. Yeah, not necessarily liking Medea's parts. Uh, that being said, um, our next most watched episode is Turn On. That one, I've noticed the discourse getting slowly better on it. Yeah. And it, being fewer complaints about it not being the show as it yeah, goes on. The, the like ratio on this is 39.8%. So that's likes versus dislikes, but it has 128 likes. So it has more likes, but more dislikes, but half the amount of views that uh, Medea has. And I still get comments on this. Oh, excuse me. Uh, There are 84 comments on that episode. Some of them are things like, uh, I wish they'd air the whole episode on YouTube. Uh... And, like, there's really no visuals in this. Uh, And then other stuff, like, uh, I could see Adult Swim airing this on uh, April Fool's Day, like they did with The Room. Yes, because I remember we we talked about it being something Adult Swim. Yeah. Uh, Turn it back on. I saw it that night. I was 11 and thought it was funny as hell. Like, a couple, like, really good people do find this and, like... There's still an ongoing discussion. Uh, bro, this channel's pretty cool. I'm subscribing right now. Yeah, it it's super interesting because a lot of people... Uh, this this is a more... Uh, a more lightning rod episode. Just because some people with Turn, it on, turn on were mad that we couldn't find well, it. Well, also, we found out that uh, a lot of the traffic's coming from the Lost Media Wiki. Because we're cited in the Lost Media oh. about this episode. There's a fascinating comment here. Yeah. Uh, someone says they called the Paley Center, and Paley Center said they didn't have it. Yes, we we double checked this. They do still have it. Okay, good. But like, but somebody I, commented two weeks ago that says that's a letdown. Oh like, really? I didn't see that. Yeah, I think that's so interesting. Because somebody like. I remember seeing that comment and res- I think I responded to it because it's like a year old comment where I'm like, I believe it's still there. And we like looked into it. Uh, but it, I believe it is still there. I don't know if maybe something else has happened since then. The world has changed a lot since then. Um, but then after that, uh, in terms of popular episodes, we get uh, the banned episodes of uh, South Park, which again are a lot of people thinking it's 
uh, the episodes, uh, Song of the South, which are people thinking are the episodes, uh, The Farm, which I also super need to fix the uh, thumbnail for. Yeah. Because it's just a picture of Dwight, so I understand. Uh, But I, I think that while some people do get confused and we do get the occasional like, why did you lie to me? <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, this is what a podcast is, dude. Yeah. It, it's hard because that... Before we did the branded thumbnails, it was a little less clear. Yeah. I, I do like some one comment on Turn On where somebody's like, how old are you? Mm-hmm. And we were like, admittedly young. <laughs> yeah, too young to, to really be caring about this, but we do. Uh, so, But somebody actually just posted fairly recently... Yeah, I responded to something, like, a week ago. Because, like, I get the notification. Well, somebody... E. Eddie Edwards was played by an actor named Robert Statz, who went on to play this exact same character in six usually obscure films over the next 15 years. Which is super interesting. Like, yeah. It's super interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If we ever blew up in popularity, I'd rent a room in the Paley Center, and we'd have a turn-on party. Yeah. Yeah, there there are still comments as recently as two, three weeks ago. Yeah, it's like, it's one of the top things that shows up when you search turn on. Yeah, I would recommend we probably should go back and fix that thumbnail sooner rather than later. What, for? Turn on? Turn on's fixed. Oh, yes, it is. Sorry. Yeah. I did I did do that for turn on. I did go back and do it for a lot of episodes. <laughs> Uh, just not the farm. Yeah, and the reason. first thing that says, like, uh, turn on's the first episode you can't watch with Laura and Noah. And I also like that there's a weird picture of a red panda in one of the moments. The oh, auto-generated moments, one of them oh, is yeah, a red that, panda. Oh, yeah, that's the end of the episode. Yeah. Is I say something like, uh, there's no clips in this, so to make it up for you, here's a picture of a red panda. And that's just how it ends. Is when it ends on a picture of a red panda. Uh Anyway, getting back to the post-mortem. Yeah, I just, I think it's interesting. Uh, some of those ones that there's a lot of confusion on, I just, I feel bad. And I'm like, I don't want to mislead anybody. I know. And I also don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> but like, it's not like it says like, turn on, full episode. It says, stay doomed, episode 40-some. 36. 36. That's a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back to the postmortem. Yeah. Um, next is Legally Blonde, which was what Lara chose after Girls Gone Wild. Yeah, this was. A, I, I enjoyed doing this episode. I, I do have the the thesis of season four is that movies maybe don't make such good pilots in a lot of situations. I mean, I really enjoyed that we could like really break down. Uh, the, like, this is a show that didn't understand the film. Yes. Because we, we broke down the trailer and we did, a, there's a lot of really good stuff in this episode. And this is what makes us go, hey, wasn't there a reality show? Yes. But between those things, we do Mr. Ed. We do Mr. Ed because that was uh, voted by our patrons because our patrons love talking animals. They do. Uh, and thus we had to do uh, Mr. Ed, which reminds me, Nancy responds to this with, I voted for Ginger Rogers, just so you know. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Ed, wow, terrible. Yeah, this Something is... Something truly awful. Peak mid-2000s faux-edgy yeah. crap. I wish we had gone back and watched the first episode of Mr. Ed, the original series. Because that's like, it's really great when we have those reference points. Uh, but I, I, I kind of remember this episode being like, rushed. Like, yes. there was some sort of issue during this time as well. Uh, be the beginning of August, yeah. And uh, I also uh, wanted to say that uh, we got a new listener at around this time uh, whose name I'm not going to pronounce correctly, so I'm going to call it Tiz Tiz. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tiz Tiz asks, uh, after seeing the interview episode, I really want you guys to do a video podcast. And the video podcast is something we've discussed many times. Yes. Uh, The main issue with doing a video podcast is the editing. What you guys don't realize is 
We say er and um a lot. And Mm. I try to get rid of them. And I often do. There is a comment complaining we say like too much on on an early episode. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I think we've like improved in like the way we talk. So we probably like don't do that as often. But there's little like pauses and things and stops that kind of help the flow of a podcast that I edit out painstakingly every week and you can't do that without creating a million jump cuts yeah uh we've or i have uh milled around with the idea of doing two cameras so there's a camera on me and a camera on Lara, and we can switch back and forth to like hide those things but all in all our youtube presence is not as strong as our audio presence And yes, our YouTube presence might get stronger if we do this, but the time and energy it would take to create this is not worth it for this podcast. I also assure you, me looking at my notes is not visually interesting. That's true. Like, we're not, we are not visually interesting while we're doing this. No, we're, it's also admittedly an effort thing for me of, I would have to curate the space in which we uh, record. Yeah. In like, a way that is just, it would delay production. It would make recording yeah. harder. Yeah, we, we're seated at a table with a single microphone in between us, which would ruin the shot as well. Yeah. And like the idea of working in extra video editing and making the space look good and making us look good and lighting... And all that stuff, not worth it for what this show is. No. And like, not to like, I'm not saying like our show is bad or anything, but it's an audio show that I post on YouTube. Yeah, I I do feel, uh, I would want to be wearing makeup and perhaps not a several years old blockbuster shirt I got at Target. Uh, Because like, I'm going to tell you right now, we'd get carried away and we'd be like, let's do costumes for this episode. And then the... (laughs) The quality of the show would be ruined. Yes, because, like, I would want to curate the look of the pour one out drinks more than we do. Yeah. More often than not, the pour one out drinks are being consumed out of a large Jurassic Park mug. Yeah, that's one of the things, that's why we stopped kind of, like, taking pictures of them. The drinks are real. I should mention that the drinks are real. But, like, it's... I did come to the conclusion once where I was like, we don't have any, like, fancy glasses. Like, this one should be in, like, a sifter. (laughs) This one should be in a martini glass. It's like, well, we have a pint glass or a smoothie cup. What do you want? We have, and we have have champagne flutes. Yes. And an assortment of bizarre shot glasses acquired over the space of years. So yeah, that's that's why that like the the picture started to go away because we I like a mugs. Mostly. We like making yeah, and mugs are so visually uninteresting. And some like when we used to take the pictures, some of them are just pictures of mugs that I've stuck in the YouTube videos back in season three, and uh, that's not a great visual. And it took time and effort to like get the picture, put it in there, light it correctly. I was like, this is not what our time should be spent on, on this audio podcast. My Jurassic Park Park Ranger mug. Yeah. Anyway, don't you love these post-mortems where I get upset about things like cup design? We then... I'm also really fidgety. Yes. I feel like I would actually be very distracting on camera. Uh, There have been times where... Uh, I clear the space you're sitting next to because you'll fidget with something. Yes, a lot of the time, the visual you would get would be us taking things away from the other. So we stop (laughs) playing with them. I've gotten better with it. Yeah, I think we both have. And we've stopped saying like as often. Yeah, you can tell my mouse has been moved well out of frame. Because there were a few times I would turn off the mouse. I have a wireless mouse that I usually use with my laptop. And I would often try to use it despite the fact that I turned it off prior to the beginning of the podcast. No, just throw that away from me. Because the clicking makes noise. Yeah. Uh, Next, we'll move on to uh, Legally Blonde, the musical, uh, which really enjoyed that we did this. Yes, I actually just had a a note that, uh, again, we'll talk about it toward the end of the podcast, but I'm like, oh, I need to add this to a part of this. Uh, 
Shout out to contestant Natalie Lander, who's doing a concert at Studio 54 now. Oh. So shout out to Natalie Lander, who's uh, doing really well. And uh, Lena Hall is currently Audrey in Little Shop of Horrors. That's currently oh, excellent. off-Broadway. That's currently running. So if you want to see a, st- a uh, search for Elle Woods alumna, you can go off-Broadway right now. So comments for this include, I still don't understand this comment, but this, this is the comment on this episode. This is like, are you afraid of the dark, but for adults? And also, not at all. I have no idea what that means. I don't know if our podcast is being described, if this episode's being described. I don't know. Uh, this per- The person who comments on this went, why am I watching this? They aren't roommates, are they? <laughs> I, this person kind of seems like they're having a rough time with this one. I, th- I think they're not roommates, are they, is implying that we're married. Oh. <laughs> I think that's the comment that's trying to be made there. All right, well, that, that tracks. Yeah, I, think, I don't think he's talking about the girls who all lived in a loft. <laughs> uh, so then next we have The Nerd, which I don't know why I don't like this episode. I've also just realized you spell blonde incorrectly in uh, both Legally Blonde, the musical Search for Elle Woods episodes. Oh, I don't put the E at the end. Yes, which blonde is te- like, that's still technically a correct spelling of blonde. It's just always with an E at the end uh, in that property. Did I do it for the other show? No, nope. it's right in the other show. Get out! That's the, f- that's the thing I found funny. I'm... Anyway, the nerd. I don't know why I don't like this episode. I just remember being, like, unbelievably angry for this episode. This episode also does not perform really well because it's not very searchable. This episode, I don't know. The nerd was just a mess. Uh, We got a comment that it looks like, the opening looks like uh, it should be out of the Book of Mormon. (laughs) Nancy kills it in the comments. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy, who I believe is a wonderful patron. If not, there's another girl named Nancy who recently became a patron. And Danish Guy Reviews makes fun of you when I say nerds put on puppet shows and you say name six examples. Yes. <laughs> and then I start to do so. And then we go off uh, We go off camera and I win the argument. Yes, yeah. We had to, <laughs> we had to cut away for that. Uh, in any case, yeah, there's the nerd. It, it underperformed and I don't like it. I feel like it's a great episode for research, though. Yeah. I feel like it's it does one of the things I really like when we do is it could just be a simple watch and review, but trying to find more about it so that we can at least kind of try to contextualize it. Yeah. We tried. So then next is Freaks and Geeks. Now, number one. Yeah, number one. Now, Freaks and Geeks, number one, oh my God, drops August 31st. Yeah. We complete Freaks and Geese. Geeks. Freaks, Freaks and, and Geese. Oh my god, my nightmare show. <laughs> Welcome to Freaks and Geese. Honk! Uh, the final episode of Freaks and Geeks drops October 12th. Oh my god. Uh, so there are episodes that drop in between yeah. the, these parts. And it's interesting. I immediately wanted to know, like, what do you guys think of this format where we break up our longest shows with the shorter stuff so that we're like, we're not always drowning in this. The people who liked it seem to like it a little bit. They're like, yeah, it's fine. They they seemed comfortable with it. The people that didn't like it hated it. Yeah. (laughs) So I I don't know what the solution is here. Uh, It should be noted that these Freaks and Geeks episodes, like... They're all almost two hours. Yes. <laughs> like, they, man, did we dive into Freaks and Geese. Because this kind of goes to something I alluded to earlier of shows that have had a lot of um, a lot of other things talk about it. This had a full-length documentary. Even, yeah. Of trying to feel like I'm giving it its due because I do try to do research with other shows. Mm-hmm. And trying to kind of give this show its due and trying to bring in that research and give this show what it deserves ended up, and I still feel like I omitted things. There's yeah. still things that feel like we rushed 
to try to get this show watchable. Yeah, it seemed like everyone also kind of came to the same conclusion that we did of like, the show isn't bad, but it's not amazing. Yeah, it's it's very difficult because it was deemed like this incredible... Yeah, it kind of felt like we're, we're shooting at the king. Like, everybody loves Freaks and Geeks and it's like hallowed ground. And we came in and we're like, there's nothing special about this. It's good. But it's not special. It's pizza. Yeah. You know? It's not a steak. It's not a lobster. It's pizza. It's fine. It does its job. I like it. But like, if there's more of it on, yeah, I'll eat more pizza. Yeah. (laughs) It's weird that I, like, we spent so much time on Freaks and Geeks. I don't have all that much more to say about it. Yeah, and it was so recent. The only... Other note that I wanted to bring up is this was fan picked. This yes. was a patron choice. The other choice it came down to was Zach Stone will be famous. Zach Stone is gonna be famous. He's gonna be famous, excuse me. And both of them have Tom Wilson in it. Yay. And I was just like, oh, that's kind of a fun connection. And I meant to bring that up in the five episodes of Freaks and Geeks. And I never did. And you remembered <laughs> as soon as we were done recording. Every time. <laughs> Very frustrating. I will say, like, Freaks and Geeks, in terms of, like, performance, is all over the place. Like, the worst performing episode is the second part. (laughs) For some reason. No, actually, the final part is the worst performing. Which I kind of get, because it's also the most recent. Yeah. And also, by this point, they're probably like, oh my god, I'm so done with hearing these people talk about the show. Yeah. Uh, I also, I think there was an element of like, there were people who were waiting for it to be done to listen. Yes. So I totally understand that. Um, We're going to try to figure that out soon. Let's finish the postmortem and then we'll talk about that a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, Because we do have a few more things we got to talk about. We got to talk about Sailor Moon. Sailor! Sailor Moon! Yeah, this one, we wanted to do it because it was in the zeitgeist. Uh, We... We were talking about sometimes we time out an episode to try to line up with something. Sometimes we also want to strike when the iron's hot. Yeah. And we wanted to get that Sailor Moon episode out before it became a... uh, Before it kind of stopped being news. Yeah. Uh, There's going to be another episode probably in December that strikes a similar course. Yes. A lot of people were saying that that wasn't actually an episode. That that wasn't really It was more of a pitch reel. It was a pitch reel, and that's why it has that long music video in it. I totally think, as terrible as it is, it's worth watching, because it's fascinating. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I I enjoyed that we did that episode. Uh, Then, we gotta talk about Fear Factor Live. Yeah. Which is the only episode of Stay Doomed that does not feature Laura. Yes. Laura, do you have anything to say about that episode? Uh, the one thing I... It... Unfortunately, we have video that I just never sent you and kept meaning to send you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so... And you didn't remind me to send it to I you. I did. A couple times. When you were doing this episode, you didn't remind me. I've, I've reminded you for two years. <laughs> that I need this footage. Uh, three and a half. Three, three and a half at least. Uh, but I, I want to say this. That means I give, I get to give a gold star to our listeners. Uh, because in that episode that I was sure that you were not going to have time to listen to, I imply that I break the blender. <gasps> there's, a, there's a whole bit about the, the cocktail I made because it was a blender cocktail. Yeah. That it broke the blender. Yeah. And I was like, guys, Laura doesn't need to know this part. And it was a bit because I was testing to see the loyalty of our listeners. <laughs> to see if anyone would go, yo, Noah broke the blender. And I'd be like, ha ha, you've fallen into my trap. You betrayed me. But no, instead, it turns out our listeners are all cool people. I'm going to yell at the patrons. <laughs> <laughs> like as soon as we're done recording. Yeah, I didn't listen to this because I was there. You were there. <laughs> yeah. Um, you lived through it. I also 
uh, swallow, my, like, I just remember swallowing an entire ice cream cone whole, like, stress eating it. Yeah. I, I did not love that you were doing this. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was great. I wish I could do it again. Stay tuned. Uh, so, and then cone heads, which it just happened, so I don't have anything yeah, to Yeah, it went to up say. so recently, it's hard yeah. to, uh... There, there, there's no comments on it because it's new. Uh, there's a dislike on it. Someone didn't like it. <laughs> eh, some Someone doesn't like everything. But yeah, uh, looking back, uh, we tried a lot of like new things this uh, this season. And like, in terms of shows that actually fit our format, it it's pretty low. Yeah. Uh, luckily, we did four in one episode. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that helps our numbers up. But like... I think what we're going to do is attached to this episode, there will be a a Google form. Yeah. That we're, it's going to be the Stay Doomed questionnaire. And we really want your opinion on what season five should look like. Uh, We are not going to get rid of Razzie Month. No. That's that's for sure. But we really want to know if you guys prefer the short form content where we're kind of just doing like, one show, one episode? Or do you like us to spread things out and like, you know, really dissect into like longer one-hour dramas and things like that? Um, So we're going to have a bunch of questions like that in there that we want you to figure, help us figure out what season five looked like for a better stay doomed in season five. Yeah. Uh, We do this every postmortem and I'll bring it up again. Is there anything still on your your stay doomed bucket list that you really want to cross off. Uh, I I think with the recent announcement of the community movie, I think I want to time out the cape. Well, we said that the cape would be episode 200. Yeah. Now I kind of want to do it whenever the community movie comes out. That makes sense. Six seasons in a movie. Six seasons in a movie. Uh, there's some, uh, there's some of these uh, shows that don't sound like much when I kind of talk about them, but uh, because I'm working on a project, there are things I do feel need to be covered. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking of like Boy Meets Boy. Yes, Boy Meets Boy will be the next episode. Yes. Uh, we should say that we, we have uh, the Patreon votes coming up and we're going to do two back to back. We're also going to get all the bonus episodes that we owe you up soon. Uh, but... We are going to do Boy Meets Boy next, and then we're going to do two Patreons back to back. It we love doing reality shows, so reality shows are things that we're going to be continuing to to work on. So we would we discussed the idea of doing a Patreon immediately, yeah, but we don't want to wait for the voting, yeah, to start watching something because we use the hiatus to try to create a backlog, so yes. we don't have problems for when I get COVID. <laughs> So, yeah. Other things I have on my list are Super Train. Super Train's been on there for a while. Super Train was on the schedule. And yeah. And we took it off because we couldn't find all of it. We couldn't find all of it at the time. And also, uh, it was a very long runner. And that we tried to do Super Train in season one. And I yeah. do want to talk about the different seasons a little bit when we're done this part of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're in the picture. Uh, we you're do, in the picture, yeah. We do know that this summer we are planning to go back to the Paley Center. Yes. And hopefully we'll do you're in the picture then. Yes. And then I also want to do the Geico Cavemen show. Yes. It's just like a show that's kind of always been on the list. Yeah, we have we have two shows that we cover in our live show that we've never seen. We've never done The Prisoner. Yeah. And we've never done uh Whoops, which is the 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 nuclear post apocalyptic <laughs> We've been recording for a while, folks. Yeah. Uh, I think we need to do those. Or maybe it's not whoops. It might be like oopsie or something like that. Uh, There's also a few like genres we're still missing. We still haven't done a news show. Yeah. Uh, We've talked about doing Ford Nation a few times. Maybe that'll happen next season. Uh, We've still never done a talk show because talk shows tend to run like... One season of a talk show is still like 40 episodes because it comes out every weekday. Uh, But I'd love to do a talk show uh, because we also wanted to do a variety show. 
And we still haven't done a variety show. Yeah, the, we, we've found some potential variety shows to do, yeah. at least. But, like, every every couple months I look for the Osbournes, and I can't find it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's a few things on the bucket list. Uh, the redux of Cop Rock is always on the table. Yes, and looking at our Patreon, uh, I was looking through... You asked today for, like, a last call for comments. Yeah, well, did our patrons have any questions or comments for us? Uh, Amos really loved a lot of the small weird stuff this season, which, good for him, because we did a lot. Yeah. Uh, the big episodes have been cool, but a lot of the weirder stuff has been fun to listen to. Uh, Xavier liked Terra Nova. Yeah, I, Terra Nova really came out well, like, because we used the hiatus to, like, really boost that one. These hiatuses are important. <laughs> yes. And uh, Xavier also talked about liking more short form stuff. The long form episodes being fun. Uh, but there's a lot of call for the cop rock redux. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. And a lot of confusion that Kid Nation wasn't season four. From also me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Laura didn't believe me when I said that that was last season. And like when I confirmed, like I checked... She then took her phone out to check because my word was not good enough. You spelled blonde wrong in two thumbnails. <laughs> anyway. So I was just kind of thinking about, I think that idea of breaking up some of the longer shows will also actually help us get the longer shows out. Yeah, because that's... Breaks and Geeks, we could not get momentum because it, it was a tough watch. Because like we do pay attention to things like that are brought to us that are like mentioned to us over and over again. Like freaks and geeks was mentioned to us many, many times. One show that is constantly brought up to us is flash forward and flash forward is like a 24 episode hour drama. And it was on, we, we put it on one poll and like, we then like sat and we're like, could we actually do this? Probably not. Like, it's, it would take us six parts easy. Yeah. Because like, it's like a lost type show. Like there'd be a lot to talk about. Yes. So like I, I think we might be at the point where that show will never happen. We will probably never do fast forward or flash forward unless there's like an overwhelming thing that's like dedicate the next three months <laughs> to flash forward. <laughs> well, then, then we'll do it because we listen to you guys. Um, so let's talk about our plans for the hiatus. I, wanna, I, I really do want to talk about the differences between seasons. Oh, sure, sure, sure. thinking sure. about that a lot. Season one is almost like this proof of concept season to me. Yeah. Of, we used to try to mash the entire season into one episode. I feel like that had varying levels of success. Well, it's very interesting to me, the, the first season... Uh, which was uh, was going to only be one season. We kind of liked the idea of like every year we'll do a different podcast. Uh, but we had a lot of love for this show that like really are, like helped us keep going. Uh, but in my mind, the idea of the show is one show, one episode. That's the promise we're making to you, to the audience. If we start doing two parters, we're breaking that promise. Yes. Uh, but what we really did was we continued thanks to the game over rule. Yeah. Like th that rule, that promise that I was making to the audience was also the sh the thing that was killing us. It was really difficult. And like that, if we were reviewing our own show, our review would be, it's good, but the episodes are too long and they should be two par parters. And we fixed that so we could do a season two. Because there were a few episodes I know that I wasn't barely making it through. Yeah. Because it would just, it would feel like a slog to try to cover hours and hours of TV in a couple of hours. Yeah. And so I think when Opposite Worlds finally broke it. Yes. It was such a good thing for the show. Mm -hmm. It also kept the show on a survivable schedule because we had issues of, you know, 10, thir 10 to 13 hour shows. Yeah. That's a lot to do in a week. Mm-hmm. And we also were trying to do theme months, and the theme months were... The theme months had to go. We did not realize that we needed to balance out the lengths of the shows better, and the theme months really didn't allow for that super yeah. well. Because we would give ourselves a really easy month, and then a very hard month. 
Season two is really interesting because the first half of season two is just kind of like us starting to figure out the new forum. Yeah. We start to like go in a little, a few more weird directions. We start to do films for the first time. Mm Mm-hmm. And in the middle of season, late in season two, actually, like about three quarters of the way, COVID hits. Yeah. And so at the end of season two is when we start getting uh, Pour One Out. Yeah. I mean, season two is also the new setup. Like, season one, we were sitting on the floor. Yes. (laughs) Now we have chairs. We have chairs, people. That's about three quarters of the way through season two. Yeah? Yeah, Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, because it's when we start to hit, like... March, April, May of 2020 and the world explodes and we move into a new place and then we have more of a place to sit down. Uh, season three is, I think, one of the best years of the podcast. Yeah, because we had nothing to do but watch television. It was co- It was the COVID year. Yeah. And season four has been really interesting because so much of it has been us reacclimating. Yes. Like, you know, before... In the before times, we were touring comedians, like, and we toured a lot. Like, we were often, like, away every weekend. And, like, we were kind of getting back into that. I took a new wrestling job, so, like, I'm very busy doing that now, which takes up a lot of my time. But, you know, our dedication to this show and our love for this show is something that we've tried to keep strong. Uh, But it, it leads to a lot of new situations that we've been trying to get That we're not used to handling because we had nothing but COVID before. We didn't have COVID. (laughs) We had quarantine time. We did a little bit. We did a little Um, bit. But season season four is so much of us just reacclimating into the world. It's we start to hit that schedule tightness again that we really didn't have through much of season three. We start to hit like oh no we have to try to figure out how to fit things in. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also, this is the first time we start to do stuff. Yeah. Places, things. There's been one or two times where like we've been traveling and I've kind of looked at Laura and I was like, do you want to whip your phone out and talk about things that scare us for the patrons? No? (laughs) You want to just listen to the radio? I understand. Yeah. There's also, like, we love talking about this stuff with you guys. Uh, We also want to be conscious of having our own inner lives and also being able to do things without, you know, forcing it to be content. Yeah. And like, we also want the shows to be good. Like there's many times where it's like, we could force ourselves to record or (laughs) we can make this a two parter and we'll have energy (laughs) for these parts of the show. And the second half will actually be good. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, we want what's best for the show and for you guys to enjoy. So we're working to make the show the best it can. Uh, We're going to use the hiatus to do that. Also, we got some big hiatus projects. Do you want to talk about your hiatus project at all? Uh, I am working on making an actual uh, book project out of Stay Doomed. uh, Which I think I've mentioned on the Patreon. But this is something I'm really thinking about turning into a book. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was thinking about Search for uh, L Woods, because I was like, wait, there's a part that this would make sense in. So, yeah, that was just kind of something I'm currently working on. Yes. Uh, we also are taking off suspiciously in November, which is NaNoWriMo. Uh I'm going to be not writing a novel, but I am going to be sitting down and attempting to put together plus two comedy essays... This is something we've been talking about for a while that I wanted to get off the ground, so I really want to do this. But I want to do video essays. Uh, So I have a lot of video essay ideas. Uh, There is a chance that you will see Stay Doomed Abridged, which will be, instead of conversations, just like, here's the cliff notes. For full details, go to the podcast. Uh, Also, a lot of stuff from the gaming channel is going to float over to essays. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff on it, hopefully. Uh, right now, it's just an abstract idea that I'm working on, but that's uh, what we're going to take the hiatus to try to figure out. And also, of course, taking your feedback, check out the questionnaire in the bottom. Yeah. Anything else to add? Uh, no, I think that's I think that's everything. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for season four of Stay Doomed. We will return to your normal scheduling 
uh, what is it, December the 7th? Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention that we had to move. We had to move from Tuesdays to Wednesdays. Yes, because we were so... That was, I think, a product of Freaks and Geeks. Freaks and Geeks it was, a product was of crushing that. us. It was also a product of the Patreon, because Tuesdays became streams for the patrons, and it was a thing that I couldn't turn off. Right. Like, I stream every weekday on Twitch, and there have been times where it's like, I have to edit, so I'm not doing a stream today. But then when the Patreon exclusive stream was a thing that kind of ended up happening due to the not prawn riddle and things like that, uh, I now do stream every Tuesday exclusively on Patreon at 3.30 for our patrons. And, like, I can't just not do it because it's a thing that I promised. Yeah. And I was like, well, now I can't get the episode done, so I need to wait until Wednesday to do that. So that was just a whole kerfluffle. Kerfluffle. Uh, So we will return either... December 7th or the 30th of November, because I realized that November is a five Wednesday month. Yeah. So I'm not sure exactly what we'll do. I will tell you that we will have a big news video that will be coming out on Tuesday. Uh, On the 9th will be my horror short. I made a little horror short that Mm. you'll enjoy. And then we got some other things that are in the pipeline that I don't know they're definitely happening so i don't want to promise them for the 16th and the 23rd but i will say we will be back with boy meets boy so if you want to watch along with that that's your homework for the hiatus hey laura where can people find us you can email us at the stay doomed show at gmail.com or on facebook and twitter it's at stay doomed and if you want to talk to me about anything really i'm at plus two comedy on twitter Uh, I am at Bean Bunny Lives. Until next time, stay doomed.